Hi guys, Dr. Linda Kramer. Thank you so much for joining me. Okay, today I want to talk about a situation that only just happened to me about 15 minutes ago. I went over not far from my house to run an errand and on the way back I have to go through a set of lights. So I come up to this set of lights where I turn to the right. Okay, now the lights went to red on the other side so I get the green light and as I proceeded to come out this guy slams through the intersection and nearly hit me and I thought you idiot you idiot because when he went through a red light nearly had a major accident because he was at high speed right so I was a bit shaken and I thought you idiot and I was thinking about what I was saying as well as what he was going through in his mind okay so today I want to talk about when we deliberately do things to hurt others now there is a whole multitude of things in that bucket that we can say you've just hurt me it could be words it could be actions it could be even thoughts so let's just go through some of those words you know when you're sarcastic to someone that's actually hurting them okay when we belittle someone else or we make fun of them and say oh yeah you'd never be able to do that that's actually belittling that other person so they're our thought they're our words right words can also be things like oh look at her she's so top-notch because she's got her hair all done look at the way she's doing it that's actually showing that we're jealous so again our words are hurting that other person it's affecting their confidence if they hear it right so then we go into our actions like that idiot that just ran through the red light he was pew and I was already in the intersection so I had to virtually stop or else I would have just had a major accident with him so how do I react first of all is irrelevant because that's what I'm going to teach us today but we look at what he did he had no concern he didn't care what I was thinking he was just doing what he wanted to do which is the same as when we have those words and also the thoughts you know when we have thoughts and you think oh yeah I'm just gonna knock that over for the fun of it you know those thoughts or man I really don't like that so I'm just gonna go and destroy it I'm gonna cut that down in flames so there are thoughts even though we don't even act on them or say them out loud as actions or words please stay up with me today guys because now we're at it we're right at it why do people hurt us I'll tell you why they hurt us whether it be their words their actions or their intentions or thoughts the reason why they hurt us is because they themselves are the ones living in the hurt they are projecting forward their own pain trauma regrets grudges jealousies whatever the hell they're carrying around in that bucket of little characteristics inside their brain and they are projecting that out mirroring themselves in what we do that's why people attack us that's why people ab abuse us that's why people have to cut us down that's why people have to feel privileged where that guy felt privileged oh there's a red light but I don't have to stop I'm just gonna keep going because I'm so deserving yeah so when we look at those people doing these actions because believe me there's a lot of them out there these days and you're watching me so I hope and pray that you're not one of them but the more we look at ourselves and say why am I being sarcastic why am I being attacking why am I putting people down why am I treating others less than who they deserve to be that's when we can self heal because all the people out there doing all this and believe me it's like nine out of ten at this point have you noticed it 
it's their self that's causing this pain because it's their self that's feeling the pain. So let me go straight over to my book, Five Years in Heaven, The Teachings of Heaven. Let's go and do some real self examples today. So on page 297 it starts and it's called Our Self Emotions. Okay, it's chapter 9 in the second half of the book. This is all the stuff I learnt when I was in heaven when I died in 2001. Okay, so let's just go through some of these quickly. Self-acceptance. When we self-accept ourselves, did that make does that make any sense? It means that we appreciate and we're proud of what we do. That guy running through that red light, let's just say he had a major accident and he killed me. Would he be feeling too damn proud of himself after that? Knowing that, oh man, if only I'd slowed down, I might not have killed that lady today. See? So it's all about self-acceptance. self Sorry, it's not about self -acceptance. Yeah, self-acceptance is when we self-appreciate ourselves. Okay? We learn to value ourselves. So then we value others after it. Okay? Self-acceptance and self-appreciation. Being proud of what you are. Every flaw, every flare, everything wrong with you accept it and say you know what I accept that I've got this wrong with me but it's only wrong in your eyes if you have an issue with this about me that's on you not my problem because I accept me the way I am okay I openly say I've got a missing tooth and all I have to say with that is I simply do not care because it does not affect me. Because it does have no relevance, no concern or value to the work I do. See how I'm standing up and I'm being proud of the fact that I've lived a long life and I've got things to show, battle scars. I don't need tattoos because I've got battle scars that show how gracious I am about my own self-value. I want you all to stand up and say this about yourselves. I openly say about my tooth, don't worry about what the face looks like. Don't look at the face saying the words. Listen to the words coming out of the face. In other words, don't put so much onus on materialistic things. It doesn't matter if you've got the new damn eyebrows or the big glossy red lipstick from whether it's Avon, the cheap shop or some other big named pharmaceutical or cosmetic company. It doesn't matter. What matters is the things inside us. Okay, let's go back to the book. So when we accept ourselves for all our flaws, look at me, look, I'm growing out my grey hairs with dignity, integrity, and I'm proud that I'm now going grey. I'm letting all my blonde grow out. And if it's something that you worry about, say, oh God, I can't watch her because look at her blonde hair sticking out. Why doesn't she go and get it? Oh, see what I just did? Why doesn't she? That's what I just said. Why makes this an expectation? When someone says, why don't you do that? That's showing that they're trying to control the situation because they can't control themselves first. Big words from Linda today. Self-respect. An example would be to respect a teacher which shows we admire them throughout the years of study to become a teacher. Okay? Admire. The situations, events, and other experiences that you have faced. I actually respect every situation that I have ever been through. I've had two marriages. I've had a couple of kids, whether you know that or not about me. And I am so grateful 
for every single thing that's ever happened to me. I laugh and I'm proud of every single situation that I have done because it's all about self gratification, self worth. Now, how much do you value what you've been through? So look at every single thing in your life. It may be a flaw or something that you get really embarrassed by. Why do you get embarrassed? Do you know that when we get embarrassed, that's only a sign of insecurities based on the fact that we are judging ourselves based on what other people think of us. That's why we get embarrassed. Stop doing that. Stop doing it. Don't ever put yourself in someone else's shoes and say, oh my God, I can't like Linda because she's doing this. Think about what you're only doing in this existence. The whole world has gone back crazy. Have you noticed it? The whole world's back crazy. And it's because we now watch shows like, I'm not going to say the names, reality shows where people are meeting each other for the first time, living together, getting married, not knowing anything about the other person. But every night they're going out in their ball gowns, long sleeve gloves, tiaras, and they're drinking Chardonnay. Come on, is that reality? Wait until you get home and you're seeing all those idiosyncrasies about the other person. They're, they're sneezing, blowing their nose, how they shower, poo-poo undies, that sort of stuff. When you get down to the guts of who we are with all our own idiosyncrasies, that's what I'm talking about here. Get past all this materialistic stuff that they throw in our face every day. You know a certain show and it starts with a heart? What hearts represent? L-O-V-E. And then you add island. Come on. Those shows are to make us materialistic Want to be princesses wearing our tiaras every day? Who's going to look after you when you're sick? Are you going to look after your partner when they get sick? When they lose their job? When they're getting depressed because they can't afford a loaf of bread? Are you going to stand by other people when they are thrown out on the street and they've got nothing to their name? Or are you going to live in your penthouse apartment looking down at all your servants and say, I don't care about you anymore? Come on, people, wake up. Think about who you are as yourself. Because when we concentrate on who we are and we create all that wonderful stuff inside us, it emits out of us and others are attracted to it. Okay? So the next one is self-worth, which I'm into. Okay? The next one is self-love. How do we self-love ourselves? You know, if we Google what is love, what is love, baby, don't hurt me. Ah, if you know that song. Okay, Night at the Roxbury. That's one of my favorite movies, by the way. Two guys doing it hard, down on their luck, and they end up being so good at the end of the movie because they believed in themselves. Night at the Roxbury. It's a nightclub. Okay, it's two guys off Saturday Night Live, if you want to know about it. Okay. Two guys down on their luck, they want to do an outside nightclub for all the people who can't get into the nightclub. And they finally make it a reality in the show. So, Night at the Roxbury, R-O-X-B-U-R-Y, is how you spell it. One of my favourite movies, okay? Because it's guys, you know, I like looking after the, the dark horses out there. Those that are the underdogs. I support those, the Stephen Bradbury's. You know the Australian, the Australian um, fast um, skater, speed racer, whatever you call it. He was there with like six or five other people, and they all fell down. He came across the finish line, and skated to the gold medal, because all the others were egotistical, huh? And they all wanted the gold, so they were they lost. Stephen Bradbury, who was so non-egotistical. He sat there the day before and he said, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna win against these heavyweights, but I'm going to enjoy the ride. See the attitude he had? Wow. Australian speed racer at the Winter Olympics for speed skating. Wow, a few years ago. Look him up. Watch the race. 
You'll see what I mean, because it's out there. Okay? So love every little flaw and unique little thing about ourselves. How do we love ourselves? It's when we trust ourselves. It's when we're dedicated. We're loyal. We, we respect ourselves. When we love ourselves, it means that we accept ourselves without those flaws. I don't care I'm missing a tooth. I don't care that my blonde hair is growing out. I don't care that I've got fake roses behind me and not real ones. I don't care because to me it's not important in how I operate as a person. I do care more about helping people become their full potential. I care about those who are willing to stand up and say, you know what, Linda, I made a boo-boo. Please forgive me. I'm, and I'm sorry, I'm more caring about those people who would ring me and say, you know what, it's been two weeks, are you all right? Because it shows that they're caring about me. That guy today that nearly killed me at the intersection, do you think he's going to ring me in two weeks and say, oh, wow, Linda, didn't realise. He's not going to worry. So why would I care about him? Why would I put my energy into what he did? I'm fine. My car's fine. Why worry about it? Because it's when we put energy which is our emotions, oh, when we put our emotions into people, places, things that do not deserve our emotions, that's when we're wasting our energy. And the first place to start is to put your energy in you, okay? Because the last one's a doozy and it's all about well, we go through self-confidence, self-reward, and the last one is self-forgiveness. How do we forgive ourselves for hurting other people? How do we forgive ourselves for losing a tooth, not looking after our hair? Oh gosh, if I'd been eating healthier, I may have not have been, I may be more skinny than I am now. How do we forgive ourselves for all that? The answer is, read my bloody book. I give it away for free. And if you are the ones that are fortunate enough to buy it off Lulu, Amazon, Booktopia, or other places that it is, thank you so much for supporting me. Okay? Because I like giving away stuff for free. So if you want a copy of my book, Five Years in Heaven, it's when I had my NDE, so it's all about when I died. The second half is about all the stuff I learned in heaven. How do we change the world? Go and watch Heaven Almighty with Stephen Carell, another great Saturday Night Live person in there. Bruce Almighty, he turns into Noah and he's building an ark. Morgan Freeman is, is God and he keeps to giving him all this timber and he's the one bringing all the animals around. But there's a scene there where Morgan Freeman, how do we change the world? One random act of kindness at a time. And in the movie, they make a play on that because it's one random act, a random act of kindness, A-R-K. So they write down, because it's Noah's Ark, <laughs> A-R-K, random acts of kindness creates our own self-worth, our own self-value, our own self-confidence to get out there and do it all again. And at the end of the day, it does spread out of us. And the rewards are so enormous. I haven't been sick in five years. I've got a brain tumour, broken neck, and something in my throat that I don't want to know about. Because I'm not letting it create. And I'm not letting it be part of who I am. My self is so important to who I am that I do not allow ever the energies of other beings to enter into my space. And if you want to know how to do that protection, Watch my next video because it's going to be called How to Protect Yourself. Hope you're all having a good day. 
email me. My link is below if you want a copy of my book. All you got to do is ask. Be humbled. Be kind. And most of all, love you. Talk to you all soon. Bye.